Hello bag builders, it's Diane from Spencer Og Sewing Patterns and today I wanted to introduce you to the Compact Accordion Wallet. It's my new sewing pattern and video tutorial. It's small but perfectly formed. It's an amazing compact purse that has everything you need in a handy small size. There are credit card slots to the back, which hold at least three or four credit cards each. You can also add an additional section to the front too. Instructions are given for that. Behind that is a section for coupons and receipts. There's two very roomy compartments for notes or receipts and a zipped coin pocket in the middle to hold a generous amount of coins. There are cute gussets to the side which are actually quite easy to construct and they allow the wallet to open wide for ease of use. The flap closure means it's secure and fashionable. The pattern comes with instructions for different closures including a regular magnetic clasp, a half moon clasp and a twist lock but you can use all sorts of feature fasteners on this wallet. It really lends itself to a bit of bag bling. If you like the large Worsley wallet an evergreen favourite with my customers but wanted a smaller size you're going to love this one. It's similar in construction but with lots of new twists. The finished size is 16 by 9 centimetres that's just 6 inches by 3.5 inches. It's great for smaller bags, smaller hands and quick getaways. I also wanted to include a method to have a wrist strap option but didn't want to attach it in a side seam as this would add too much bulk for stitching over where the gussets are inserted particularly if you have a domestic machine. So by making a panelled outer, we can insert the wrist strap carrier well out of the way of the other seams. So there are pattern pieces included and instructions to make the panelled outer and wrist strap too. My testers had a field day with this pattern, many of them making numerous wallets. They found it so much fun. Just have a look at some of their creations. It's engineered so it can be easily made on a domestic machine, keeping layers to a minimum on every seam. It's a moderately easy pattern and the full video tutorial included makes it a breeze for you to follow along. It's available to purchase now on the link below. The pattern's available in instant PDF download format. It prints onto US letter size or A4 size paper and it has full size computer drafted pattern pieces with it. There are full written instructions with lots of colour photographs throughout and of course the video so long to help you get through it with ease. You can stitch it on a domestic machine, you don't need an industrial. I've kept the layers to a minimum so you can get through that without any problems and I really think you're going to enjoy it. It's a moderately easy pattern to follow. And of course I have a Facebook board for help and support with all my patterns so you can just post on there as you're sewing. Um, if you need help with anything I'm always around. And of course, lots of help, hints and tips on my YouTube channel here. So do subscribe to that too. So what are you waiting for? Download the Compact Accordion Wallet now and go so. So things you're going to need for this project. So outer and lining I've used both in quilting cottons. It's best to stick with quilting cottons for your first one. They're much lighter to handle, they make a nice wallet, you don't have to worry about the seam thicknesses or a domestic machine being able to get through them, they're absolutely perfect. So make your first one in just quilting cottons. If you want to progress afterwards to making it in cork or vinyl 
or canvas or denim you definitely can but just make your first one in in quilting cottons make it easy on yourself and then you can ascertain how strong your machine is or how much power it's got and how much further you can go but you definitely have no problems whatsoever with a domestic of using quilting cottons so as i say i've used outer and lining in quilting cottons I've also used medium weight fusible interfacing for this project. I've used a non-woven one in my sample here today, which is uh, Violin F220. You can use non-woven or woven, like a Pellon S101, anything medium to lightweight, just to give it a little bit of structure on the lining. I've also used a small piece of Decaville Heavy. Now this is Decaville Heavy, if you haven't seen it before, it's a wonderful substance, very leather-like, very easy to sew through you wouldn't believe it to look at it but it is a really fantastic product if you can't find De decaville heavy you can substitute that with a different ultra firm interfacing such as pelon f71 so that's it for the fabrics we're using and the interfacings in terms of the hardware we're going to use for this project we're going to use a number three seven inch zip and that's a nylon zip we want a number three zip because a number five zip has a much bigger puller on it and it could push the flap out of shape. So we want to keep that quite petite and we want to use a nylon zip because we are going to be snipping through it at one point during the pattern. Then you can choose your clasp. Lots of variations on the clasp you can choose. Today I'll just go, going to demonstrate with a regular magnetic clasp, but I also give you directions in the pattern measurements to use a twist lock clasp or a half moon clasp and you can use those quite happily it gives you full instructions for those I mean you can go mad with those there's lots of sort of exciting and interesting clasps on the market and really any of these type of things will work perfectly well buckle clasps tongue clasps um, lots of different twist locks so go mad there the final thing you're going to need if you want to add a wrist strap is you're just going to need a half inch D-ring, just one of those and one half inch swivel clasp. So that's it. That's everything we need and we're ready to make a start. Let's cut our fabrics out and get stuck in. Read through your pattern in full before you start because there are options for various fasteners. There's also options for a panel body, options for adding a wrist strap. So just decide which which options you want to include before you start, because obviously there'll be different measurements, but it's all included in the pattern. Today I'm going to demonstrate on the version with the magnetic clasp. So just a solid body with a magnetic clasp. And that's the one we'll be working on today. I've cut out all my fabric pieces and I'm ready to go. I've cut some nice bright fabric, so hopefully you'll be able to follow along nice and clearly. Just a couple of tips before we start, and that is that there are lots of small seams in a wallet. So trim your thread ends and each seam as you sew to keep everything looking tidy. And you should have no interfacing in your seams anywhere. We're trying to make this a no struggle wallet. Now, obviously I make all my patterns on domestic machines. I don't use industrials. If you do have an industrial machine or you have um, a really strong or a powerful domestic machine, then by all means you can put interface in all over but um, just to keep it domestic friendly i have cut the um, interfacings out of the seams in most of the places but follow along with the video and you'll see what i'm doing but it makes things much easier time to prepare our outer body piece so grab piece a in your outer body fabric and we're going to fuse the extra firm stabilizer piece b to the wrong side just a little tip here make sure that your fabric looks upside down to you because then your flap will lie in the right direction when you've finished. So I'm going to flip that over and I'm going to apply my piece B, my ultra firm fusible interfacing to the wrong side. I'm going to apply that centrally. You'll see the flap end is slightly wider on the interfacing than it is on the body and that's to keep it out of the seams. You can see it's slightly wider there and that's your flap end. So when you turn that over, it will fall in the right direction. So apply that centrally so you'll have a one centimetre or three eighths of a, an inch seam allowance top and bottom and at the top here on these sides and that'll be slightly wider and give that a good press to make sure it's secure. Then take your lining piece A and your 
medium weight interfacing piece A and trim your interfacing down just along those long edges by the seam allowance. So you're taking off one centimetre or three eighths of an inch on both sides so it's going to be narrower than your lining piece. And then we're going to fuse that centrally to the reverse of your lining piece. Just like that. Again, this is to keep as much bulk as possible out of the side seams, just to keep it easy sewing. So this is our lining piece A, and I'm now going to apply the magnetic clasp to that. So today I'm just using the magnetic clasp. If you're using a half moon clasp or a twist lock clasp, you don't need to do anything at this point. We don't apply those till the end. But if you're just using a regular magnetic clasp, this is where we want to apply it. So the measurement is in the pattern. Uh, instructions so basically we're centralizing that um, just down from the top edge and we want to mark the position I've made a dot there where it should be I'm just going to lay the washer on I've actually added a small piece of Decaville on here as well just for extra strength and then I'm going to slit through those marks if you're worried about slitting too far with a seam ripper or the scissors you can just add a pin at the end that will stop it but I'm going to just go for it Let's slip through those marks. Flip that over and apply the male part of the magnetic clasp. That's the thinner part of the clasp with the nipple. And then wash it on the back. And I'm going to use my trusty metal ruler to squash those out. You can flatten those outwards or inwards, whichever is your preference. I prefer to go outwards because um, it makes it a little bit slimmer. So there we are. That's ready for our next stage. So now we're going to work on our credit card slots. I love credit card slots. They're so exciting. Um, so we're going to take piece F and we've already fused piece F. We've got our medium weight fusible interfacing on there. Keep your pattern piece pinned to it and we're going to take note of the lines A, B, C, D and E and those are our fold lines. So to make things easy for ourselves when we're folding, I'm going to make a little notch on each of those lines. So make sure it's nice and accurate. Keep it within the seam allowance. We don't want to see it afterwards. And I'm going to do that on the other side as well. So A, B, C, D, and E. And now we're going to head to the ironing board to fold that into place. So using the notches and the paper pattern piece to help, we're going to fold this into place. So with the right side up, let's take a look at line A. So we're going to fold with wrong sides together along line A. So I usually flip it over just to make sure those sides are lining up okay. And then iron, excuse the noise. I've got a nice sharp crease there. And then fold that crease up to line B, which is your second notches. There. Match it up on both sides. Keep that next to it so you can see what's happening. Make sure it's nice and straight. Press in place. And then we want to fold up line C, which is those notches just one centimetre or three eighths of an inch up from that, to line D, which is the next notches up. So sometimes it can be easier just to fold that into place first so you know you've got a nice one centimetre or three eighths of an inch even gap there because that's your first credit card slot. I'll just undo that again so you can see it. So that's our line with a nice crease in. So fold that up to line D, which is your next set of notches there. Keeping it lovely and even all the time. Press in place.
and then line E, we're going to fold back at line E. So again, you want the same one centimetre or three eighths of an inch, and it should actually meet exactly at the back now. Press that into place. See, looking gorgeous, very nice. Now there is a measurement given in the pattern just to make sure you can do a check on that just to make sure you've got it at the right uh, at the right depth. Now I'm going to take this to the sewing machine and I'm going to top stitch all three of those edges. Now just as an aside here if you do want to add your logo badge or a name badge on there you can add it centrally to this credit card pocket at the bottom but just make sure you could just go in through one layer of fabric before you put anything together and then top stitch those edges. So I have a number 14 needle on my machine. I've got my stitch length set at about 2.8, 2.9 millimetres. Um, and I have got a guide foot on my machine. And there's no shame in using guide feet. And a blind hemming foot for those of you who use my patterns a lot will know. Oops, sorry. Well, no, I love using a blind hemming foot because it's just a great foot to give you um, a nice top stitch, a nice even top stitch. You just set your needle to one side slightly and use that as a guide. So I'm going to top stitch these one at a time. Three mil or one eighth of an inch from the edge. Fold that back into place and make sure you trim each of these little individual threads off every single time. So trim those up nicely and then back to the ironing board and we're going to press up a one centimetre hem right sides together on the bottom of each of those short raw edges. So I've trimmed all my thread ends and I've pressed up a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch hem on the bottom of both those short raw edges. So they should now be lying on top of each other, matching exactly. And if you wanna double check on the height of that, there is a, a size check measurement in your pattern piece. So next, I'm gonna stitch along those edges just to secure it. Grab a couple of clips. I wanna hold that in place. I'm gonna stitch up within the seam allowance just to hold those credit card slots in place and I'm going to stitch from the bottom on both sides. If you stitch from the top you're at risk of sort of knocking them out of place. So stitch from the bottom on each. Flip it over. It's just a base stitch to hold it for now. So trim your threads and that's that unit complete ready for the side panels. So grab your side panel pieces G and your side panel interfacing pieces H and you'll see that H is a good bit narrower than G and that's again to keep the interfacing out of the side seams of that panel so we're going to fuse that interfacing centrally to the side panel so you can see there's a gap at each side again so do that with both so take one of your side panels and lay it down face up and then we're going to take your completed credit card slots and lay that face down centrally, lining up this long edge. And I'm going to clip that in place so you'll have the same overhang top and bottom. And when you have a look at it inside, you're actually right sides facing. Okay. So I'm now going to stitch along there with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. And of course, if I haven't mentioned it before, keep trimming and always do a back stitch beginning and end of each of these seams. And we're going to repeat that with the other side, just so you can see. So lay your second one out flat, your panel, your unit, Face down on top again, so it's exactly the same as the last side. Flip that round so I can see it. Same distance overhang, top and bottom. 
clip in place and stitch with the same one centimeter seam allowance. Three eighths of an inch. Beautiful. Okay. Now I'm going to open that up, flip it over and open it up to the right side. And I'm going to take that to the ironing board and press it open. So I've pressed that open nice and flat. What you want to do next is flip it over and press those overhanging side panels over towards the back. So the whole unit is now the same width or the same depth. So once you flip it over again, those are pressed down in place and it all looks the same uniform depth all the way along. Again, there's a size check measurement in the pattern if you want to double check on that. Keep snipping all those little edges and now we're ready to place that onto our lining. So let's grab our body lining piece A and lay it face up. If you've already added magnetic clasp, this should be at the top and if you're using a directional print, it should look the right way around to you. I've drawn a line in chalk, a distance up from the bottom edge of that piece and the measurement for that is given in your pattern instructions. And I'm going to use that for a guide to lay on my completed credit card unit. So lay the bottom edge of the credit card unit along that line and your credit card slot should be facing up towards the top. I'm going to clip that in place, make sure it's nicely aligned. And then I'm going to take that to the machine and stitch along that bottom edge, just top stitch along it at a distance of three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge. So now I want to attach the other three sides. So I'm going to top stitch around the other three sides of the side panel. So up from the bottom, across the top and back down the other side. Again, three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge. Keep trimming. Now there's full instructions in the pattern um, to add a second card slot unit as well on the other side. I personally prefer this with just one card slot unit because it keeps the wallet nice and slim when it's folded over. But those instructions are all there for you. Now it's time to work on our centre zip coin pocket. So take your two inside zip coin packet pieces C. I've cut them in different fabrics just so you can see. One's going to be the lining and one's going to be the outside of it. And also take your inside zip coin pocket interfacing piece D. Now with that first one, we're going to fuse that centrally to the wrong side of piece C. And again, you'll see that it's narrower, so it's not going to go into the side seams. So I'm going to fuse that. Make sure you know which is the top because it's not square. So once you've fused it on, pin your pattern piece back onto it so you know which way around it goes. It's, you'll see it's got top written on it. It does make a big difference. And then with your lining piece for the coin pocket, we, you don't have to do this, but it helps. Just to avoid any bagginess in the coin pocket itself, once it's made up, obviously it's sitting inside the outer. Um, I'm just going to trim off the tiniest amount, just a quarter of an inch or half a centimetre from the bottom edge. So if that's your top, obviously it's on your pattern piece top. I'm just going to slice a small amount off the bottom there. Okay, and then again, I'm going to pin the pattern piece back on so I know which way around it's going because it's so easy to get that mixed up. So I'll just go and Attach that, fuse that on, and we will start work on the zip next. Let's work on our zip. So, take your zip, and we want to draw a line about an inch from the open end or the stopper of the zip. So, put your ruler across and just draw a line in chalk. Open your zip past that. And we're going to fold along one of those lines and press 
in and away. So you're folding the zip teeth at right angles to each other. Hopefully you can see that. I'm going to put a pin in there just to hold it. Can you see what we've done? So that will be enclosed within the seam. That will make a nice smart edge to your zip. So we're going to do the same on the other side. So fold along that chalk line, press the zip behind. So you're forming a right angle. And pin that in place again. We'll just have a look at that because it might not be exactly meeting. We want to make sure that we've got a lovely sharp straight line across there so make sure they're exactly equal and they're bending at the same place so i think we're fine with that so i'm now going to just tack that in place on the on the sewing machine just within the seam allowance so you can't see it so i've stitched that within the seam allowance you'll see those stitch lines will be hidden once that's inserted into the seam. So that's the same on both sides. And now I'm going to make the zip tab. So I've taken piece J to the ironing board and I folded it in half across the width. Sorry, my pattern piece here still says piece K, but it's actually piece J now. Folded in the sides to meet that centre crease and then folded it in half to conceal all the raw edges. And that's my zip tab ready. Now I'm going to cut my zip. So the measurement for the zip is, for the length is in the pattern. Basically make a mark. So you're measuring exactly from this end. So from where that 90 degree angle is, you want to mark the length to there. And then we're going to be really brave and just snip it off. And then I'm going to insert the raw edge of the zip into my zip tab. Now you can zigzag across there if you want to. It will add a little extra security, but it's not totally necessary. So I'm just going to slip that into my zip tab and I'll hold that in place with a clip. Um, you can use a little bit of double sided tape if you prefer. And then I'm going to stitch across there. You can use one line of stitching or two line of stitching. Remember to back tack at the beginning and end. You can even zigzag it if you want to. So that's our zip tab completed. Trim it up. And we are ready to attach that to our zip pocket. So grab your pocket pieces C and let's start work on our coin pocket. Now, if you need any extra tips on how to attach a perfectly straight zip, I do have a YouTube tutorial on that. So I'll put the link in below. If you want to give that a quick watch before you start. Um, you don't need it. It's quite an easy project, this, for, for inserting a zip. So take your pocket pieces C and make sure you've kept your pattern piece on there and you know which is the top. So I'm going to take the outer piece, which is the fused piece. Make sure the top is at the top. If you're using a directional print, then it should look the right way around to you now. Double check that top edge. Now lay your zip right side down on top with the puller to the left when closed. So match up that short edge at the top. I'll open that a little bit, it's easier. You'll have a gap at both edges, so make sure that gap is equal on both sides. So it's just about the size of your seam allowance. It's for keeping the zip out of the seam allowance. So we're going to pin that in place. Or clip, sorry. I find clips easier with zips. They don't push the zip out so much. And then grab your lining piece and place that face down on top. Again, making sure that's the top. When you lay it face down, you'll notice it's a little bit shorter. That's because you trimmed off quarter of an inch earlier on. So I'm just going to clip that in place on top. So make sure everything's secure. I've put a zipper foot onto my machine and I'm going to stitch across the top with a quarter inch or six millimeter seam allowance. You'll find it's easier to stitch from the side that's fused because it's more stable so your fabric won't, won't push out of place. 
stop halfway and move your zip if you need to just raise your presser foot leave your needle in great keep snipping and i'm going to take that to the ironing board and press the two sides away from the zip to expose the zip tape so i've pressed that flat you can of course snip off that excess zip tape inside there before you press it i forgot to mention that nice and flat so now we can top stitch that edge this is the only side you will be able to top stitch you won't be able to reach in to do the other side so just three mil from the edge an eighth of an inch keep snipping and let's attach the other side of the zip So lay your coin pocket panel down flat with the outer uppermost and with the zip at the top. Leave the lining where it is underneath and lift the outer pocket piece. Bring it up to meet the free edge of the zip tape and clip it in place. Make sure it's sitting equally on both sides as before. Nice and symmetrical. And then flip the whole panel over, make sure you nice and straight there and you're sitting right at the top edge so with the fan panel flipped over I'm just going to move that zip out of the way a little bit actually with the panel flipped over lift the lining piece to match that top edge too so you're enclosing that zip again like a zip sandwich clip in place and then we're going to stitch across that top edge again with a six millimeter or quarter an inch seam allowance Snip off your ends, snip off your excess zip tape and then we're going to turn that through easier from one end because it's open there we go and push that pocket lining down into place and then I'm going to take that to the iron and press that nice and flat again So that's looking beautiful, that's our coin pocket virtually complete. I'm just going to stitch down the side seams just to baste it into place. Clip on each side. And just within the seam allowance close to the edge. You can zigzag it if you prefer, it's literally just to hold it in place. You can leave your zipper foot on there as well, it helps to get past the zip at the end. So there we go. Trim up yet again. Just keep it looking incredibly tidy all the time. I'm now going to just trim down the edges to make sure everything's aligned and all those tiny threads, any frayed edges are gone. Just the tiniest amount. We're not looking to remove any length here. You see, I've just taken nothing off there. Okay, so that is ready to go. I'm going to put that to one side. And let's grab our body pieces again. So here I have my body and lining pieces A. Place them with the top facing away from you so that you've got your clasp towards the top, you've got your credit card pockets facing towards the top, the flap is on the top of the outer, you know that because your wider section of the interface is, is there. And then we're going to press a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch hem on the bottom of each of those pieces so wrong sides together so you can see I've already done that I have a hem there ready pressed now place the lining and body pieces right side together matching up those folded hems at the bottom lining up all the edges and clip them in place Flip it over to the front, so stitch all three sides with a constant one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance, leaving the bottom edge open. Don't make your seam allowance wider where the stable lines are narrows, stay at your one centimetre or three eighths of an inch all the way down. Draw a line in if you have to, there's no shame in that, I do it all the time. 
Um, use your stabiliser as a guide when you get to the top and sew just a millimetre or a fraction of an inch just outside that. Make sure those edges stay under at the bottom. And there we go. So I'm now going to trim this and turn it through. So at the top corners where the flap is, I'm just going to trim those seam allowances down. can trim a little from the seams if you used a thicker fabric but uh, it's not necessarily necessary on um, quilting cottons. I'm going to turn that through. So you shouldn't need anything to push the corners out, just your fingers will be fine. And then I'm going to take that to the the ironing board. I'm going to give that a good press. Make sure those top edges stay tucked inside. So there's our wallet beautifully pressed. Um, just a tip there when you're pressing over the flap end just be careful when you're pressing over where the clasp is underneath just avoid that little bit so you don't get a mark on the top there. So we're ready to top stitch and we're just going to top stitch the flap section. So if you flip it over and look where, where your credit card pockets start and finish, I'm just going to make a mark on the other side in chalk. And I'm going to start at that point and finish at that point because we actually use the top stitching later to secure the, the purse together on the rest of it. So we're going to be stitching from the front, from here, around the three sides, back to here. So starting on my chalk mark, three mil or an eighth of an inch in from the edge. So there's our top stitch flap. Time to add our magnetic clasp. So the measurement is given in the pattern, depends on which type of clasp you're using as to what the measurement is, but we're adding it to the outer body at the end that we still have open. So it's not the flap end, it's the other end. So flip your purse over and at that end that's still open, the measurement's given in the pattern according to whichever clasp you're gonna use. So I've marked that out already. I'm now just gonna add my clasp. And we'll make our slits for the clasp. Push our prongs through. Flip over, add the washer to the back. Show that inside and that's just, we've only slit through the outer part of the purse of the wallet. We haven't slit through the lining as well. Push that down, flatten it with my trusty ruler. So we can just see that inside. And now we're ready to close up the purse. So I'm just going to clip the edges together. Make sure they match nicely. Flip to the front and I'm going to top stitch along that edge to close. Three mil or an eighth of an inch from the edge. Time to make our gusset babies. So grab your four gusset pieces and lay it with the narrower bottom edge facing you. Give it a quick press. 
Now I'm not using any interfacing whatsoever in these because I'm making it on a domestic machine. If you are using a industrial machine, then you can fully interface. There's no problem whatsoever. I would use a medium weight interfacing. If you're using a domestic and you do want a little extra bit of crispness to the edge of the creases in the gussets, then you can add just a small piece, fuse a small piece to the center there. Just keep it out of the seam allowances. So our first operation is just to fold up a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch hem along that bottom edge, wrong sides together. Then I'm gonna fold in half with the right sides together, matching up that bottom folded hem and the edges, the raw edges. And just clip that in place. And then we're going to stitch that side seam with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Do make sure you back tack at the beginning and end of every seam in these little gussets. It is important. You don't want them to come apart afterwards and trim as you go. You don't want lots and lots of thread ends at the end to be trimming up. So now I'm going to just wiggle shuffle that side seam around because we've made a tube there I'm going to shuffle it around so it sort of makes its way to the center and then I'm going to open up that seam allowance and press it in place you can trim up this bottom edge a little bit and just just to reduce a bit of bulk on the bottom if you wish and now I want to measure the length of that or the height of that gusset they are a set measurement and you should only need a, a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance there but we want to make sure every single one is perfect so i'm going to measure it and mark a line so i know it's perpendicular to the bottom edge and at right angles to the seam and every one of my gussets is going to be an exact height i'm now going to stitch along that line So I'll trim down that seam by half. So our folded edge is still open at this point. We're going to turn it through there. Get a chopstick or other blunt instrument. Stay away from points. You don't want holes in the corners. Just push them out nicely and then I'll press that nice and flat. Make sure your folded edges have stayed neatly inside and now I'm going to top stitch closed that bottom edge. You'll see one side just rises very slightly but that's fine. Just follow it round with your stitching just to close it off. So you can top stitch the top edge as well if you wish to. And finally, I'm going to fold that in half now with the seam on the outside. So I'm going to match the two long edges so they're nice and neat. There we go. One beautiful gusset. And now repeat with the other three. So you have four gorgeous gusset babies. So you should now have four beautiful, even equal Spencer on gussets. People will be shouting from far and wide, look at those fabulous gussets. So time to attach them. Lay your main body panel out flat with the lining facing upwards and the flap towards the top. Take your first gusset and lay with the narrower top stitched edge towards the bottom of the credit card slots. So we're opening it out and we're laying it along that edge. Now in theory, as long as you've done all your measuring right, it will be exactly the same size. So we're just going to clip that on. I'm going to line it up exactly with the edge because we're going to top stitch that onto there. So we want it really, really exactly lined up on top. So you can see that gusset is open. We're not stitching the other side to it. 
So you've opened up the fold and the narrower edge of the gusset is facing towards the bottom of the credit card slots. Now take your second gusset and again with the narrower top stitch edge facing in towards the bottom of the credit card pockets. So that way around. So those two narrower edges are facing towards each other. We're going to position that again against the edge of the wallet itself about one centimetre or three eighths of an inch down from the first gusset and it'll just leave a little gap at the top probably about a quarter of an inch or six mil so clip that in place so you can see there we have both gussets they're both open with the narrower edges towards the centre the first one's laid on top of the credit card pockets and the second just below it if you did add a second set of credit card slots it should sit exactly on top of those. Now fold your wallet up just to double check everything's lying in the right position. Make sure they fall on top of each other when you fold the wallet up. And yes, that looks fine. And then we can go to the machine and we can stitch along that edge. So we're going to start from the bottom of the purse all the way along just to the very top of the credit card slots because you already stitched you already top stitched around the flap itself so we're going to stop just as we get over there and back stitch back So let's repeat with the second side. So the narrower edge of the gusset to the bottom of the credit card slots. Now this time make sure they fall in line directly with your first set. So again, I'll turn that round and I'm going to top stitch along that side. So that's both sets of gussets attached. Now we're going to join the gussets and insert the coin pocket. So starting with the right hand side, pull the two gussets out to the side fully. Make sure the folds are open and then fold the wallet body up so they're lying directly on top of each other. Line them up so the gussets match exactly at those outer edges and clip in place. Just one little tip, if your gussets don't match exactly, you know, one is a, a fraction smaller than the other, match them on the top edges rather than the bottom, because that's what you're going to see. You're not going to see the bottom edges. And then I'm going to take that to the machine and I'm going to stitch closely to the outside edge to secure the two together. So just a minimal three millimetre or eighth of an inch along that line. Make sure you back tack beginning and end. So that's nice and secure. Now grab the coin pocket section that you completed earlier. Make sure your edges are beautifully trimmed. We don't want any rough edges here. Lay it so that your top stitching is on the top and that your zip puller is to the left when closed. For the moment just put it to the middle. I'm going to push that into the side of the gussets inside between the two to make a gusset and pocket sandwich. I'm going to push it up against right against the edge of that top stitching you just made and clip it into place there inside. I'm going to push it in, drop it inside, push it up against the top stitching, level the top of the zip with the top of the gussets. And you'll see the gussets are angled this way, so it will stick up a little bit at the moment. That's fine. That's what we expect. Make sure it's tucked right in and reaching that top stitching and I'm going to clip that in place. I'm going to use a couple of clips here just to be sure it's secure. Now I'm going to take that to the machine. I'm going to stitch along there with a one centimetre or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. You can leave your zipper foot on if it helps. 
You can use a hump jumper if it helps, but you should be fine if you're just in quilting cottons. So that's nice and secure in there. Give it a tug, make sure it's all sitting nicely. And let's do the other side. So pull the gussets out to the side, line them up on top of each other, clip in place. And we'll edge stitch that with our three mil or eighth of an inch seam allowance. And now we can add the second side of the coin pocket. So grab your coin pocket, pull it in as far as you can and move it over to this side. And the same thing again, a little bit trickier on this side, but you can do it. Just push it in to reach that top stitching. Make sure that your zip edge is lying directly in line with the top of your gusset. Push it in, clip it in place. Check underneath, make sure that that is going right into the top stitching line. It's absolutely meeting it in there, so you're going to be able to grab it with your seam allowance that you're going to do now. So that looks, looks great. So let's stitch that in place. Wonderful. Trim it up. Your last little bit of trimming. Nestle those gussets back in where they should be. Zip up and there we have it. So you can take that to the ironing board and give that a final press. Make sure all your gussets are sitting beautifully inside and it's all pressed into place. Everything should be falling in line in there beautifully. Now you do have the additional option of adding a line of top stitching once it's finished if you want to. I quite like it without on something like this that's really showcasing the print. But if you open it up to the inside, you can just stitch along the top there with one line, two line or even three lines of stitching to give you a feature across the top edge. And that would also help if you do find there's any bagginess inside here. Hopefully you won't have any, but if you do, you can add that extra line of stitching in there. So I hope you enjoyed making your compact accordion wallet and you found everything easy to follow. Don't stop there. One's never enough. Why not try making the panelled body and the wrist strap version next or try it with a different clasp. Do join my Facebook sewing group if you're not already a member. And of course, while you're on YouTube here, do subscribe. There's always lots of free hints, tips and bag making tutorials here too. I do hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and I really look forward to seeing the pictures of everything you make.